Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we have an episode of Commander's Two Cents. On episodes like these, I give you my own personal take on topics about the format in general and current news. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, the Rules Committee's next regularly scheduled update is going to be on the 29th of June, which is in the near future for me, I guess right now when I'm recording this. It might not be when you watch this, depending on if you're watching in the distant future, so it might have already happened. But regardless, I think this is an interesting topic to talk about today. Today I'm going to be talking about what if the hybrid mana rule changed? Now, I've got no insider information on the rules committee on, you know, what rules might be potentially changing, if anything changes, or any cards that are banned or unbanned or whatnot. But this has been a topic that's been heavily debated in the Magic community for quite a while. I guess the Commander community for quite a while. Uh, basically, uh, the issue is this, okay? Hybrid mana cards at this point, like Turn to Mist, let's just put that one up the screen. It costs one in an Azorius. So right now, because of that uh, uh, hybrid mana right there, the Azorius uh, symbol, essentially, it is considered to be both white and blue. So it has to, it can only be placed into decks that have both white and blue. So it couldn't just go into a mono blue deck or a mono white deck or even a teamer deck or, or whatnot because it doesn't have both of those requirements. So essentially, a card like this, you know, can't see play in certain decks. And some players think that, you know, maybe the hybrid rules should be considered as, you know, um, one of the colors, uh, but not the other. You can It's an or, not an and, essentially. And I believe Mark Rosewater make, made that argument. I'm not here to say, you know, what side of the argument that I'm on or, you know, what's right or wrong. Everyone's got their own opinion on this topic. But I'm just here to talk about today, you know, what if the rule actually changed? Kind of what cards would start seeing more play? Kind of what what kind of color pie breaks kind of are, are in there as well? So let's just kind of jump into it with that first. So color pie breaks... Uh, that's kind of one of the arguments that's kind of against actually changing the rule because there are certain cards, you know, many of the hybrid cards do something kind of along the lines of what both colors can do, but there are some that are clearly kind of on one side or the other. So you'd be giving a color and access to access to something that they usually don't do. So like Waves of Aggression is a good example. It's a source that costs three Boros Boros. It says untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, additional combat phase, fall by additional main phase, and it's got retrace. So yeah. Extra combat, that is something that is very much just, I'm pretty sure, just only in red. You really don't see that in any other color, especially not in white. So yeah, just giving white essentially an extra combat spell is kind of weird. A repeatable extra combat spell, because again, it's got retrace. So yeah, that's a card that I think would see more play, because it can go into more decks. Again, it doesn't just have, just have to be mono white. You know, it can be in any other combination of decks. You know, it could be in a Selesnya deck, because, you know, you don't, again, have to consider that red mana symbol if a hybrid... Uh, if hybrid rules were changed, essentially. Uh, another card that kind of breaks the color pie, or would break the color pie, uh, if the hybrid rules were changed, is Spinning Image. It's a sorcerer that costs four and Simic Simic. Uh, create a token that's a copy target creature, and again, it's got Retrace. So yeah, uh, creating clones of things is pretty much that's ex it's exclusively basically in blue, especially creating clones of any creature on the board, you know, an opponent's creature. Essentially, that's something that green really doesn't do in... I mean, it kind of debated, you know, if it should be doing it or not. But yeah, I could I could see, I don't know if this one will see, you know, any more play, but it's kind of something that'd be kind of weird kind of seeing in a mono green deck. Oh, and by the way, I create a token that's a copy of your creature. So that's something that that breaks the color pie. Uh, one that probably would see a little bit more play, I think, um, and that, you know, does break the color pie in a way is Mercy Killing. It's an instant for two and a Slesnia. It says target creatures, controller sacrifices it, then put puts X one one green and white elf warrior creature tokens into play where X is that creature's power. Yeah, um, white can definitely kind of you know force players to sacrifice creatures. Green doesn't isn't really supposed to be able to deal with creatures in that way. They do have kind of fight mechanics and whatnot. But yeah, making someone sacrifice a creature, um, and giving them tokens uh, for that creature isn't really something that's kind of in green's you know, portion of the color pie. 
generally I, w I would say probably not at all really um but yeah this is a it's a good it's a flexible spell because again you can use this on one of your own creatures if it's going to die anyway to make yourself a lot of tokens so i could see this one seeing more play and i would consider it to be a color pie break uh next up there's a lot of green cards in here actually and i actually recently did an episode on green color pie uh green cards that break the color pie so it's pretty funny uh but biomass mutation is another one that i think would be a color pie break but not for green that's uh, an instant that costs X Simic Simic, and it says creatures you control have base power and toughness XX until end of turn. This one is, I mean, I definitely think that it, it's more so something that green would be doing is kind of, you know, uh, adjusting to power and toughness with like a combat trick kind of thing. Uh, I wouldn't really necessarily see this in blue. If blue is doing this, it's usually kind of lessening the power and toughness of creatures, um, of your opponent's creatures, essentially kind of making, changing their base power and toughness, you know, into like a 1-1 one, one or whatnot. That's kind of more so what I would see a blue uh, spell do. But yeah, this kind of, you know, if you've got a tall ran deck or whatnot, and you've got a ton of drakes, and you're swinging away with them, and then you just kind of cast this as a combat trick to make all your drakes into 6-6s six until on a turn. Yeah, that could be like, you know, a, a kind of spell that kind of comes out of nowhere. I could see this be, seeing play in, in a couple of, you know, a couple more decks. Obviously, it's not an extremely powerful card, but, you know, it, it's something, again, that I don't see kind of as a blue card, really, uh, more so as a green card. And the last one that I've got kind of in this color pie break category, although there are other ones that are definitely kind of touching into breaking the color pie a little bit, this one I definitely think would see a lot more play as well, and that's Debtor's Nell. It's an enchantment for four Orzov, 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 so seven mana in total. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. This, I mean, is, you know, a kind of repeatable reanimation effect kind of each turn, and you can steal from opponent's graveyards. I can't think of too many ways to directly steal creatures from your opponent's graveyards in, in mono white. I don't know if there really are too many. Uh, this definitely kind of more so on the uh, on the black side of things where, you know, you're stealing creatures from opponent's graveyards more. So it's a very powerful effect. Again, probably would see a lot more play. Again, it's not just, you know, in a mono white or a mono black deck where this would see more play. You know, it, it could be in more so like, you know, a a Rakdos deck potentially you know maybe could be able to use this you know uh, that you know is looking to reanimate some big creatures or whatnot so yeah there again that's kind of like the 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 crux of the hybrid mana kind of uh, argument essentially is that if you do kind of you know pick out that distinction that it, it apply these can be used in a lot more decks than they would be able to be used and again whether that's a good or bad thing I'm not here to talk about um next up though Let's just talk about some more hybrid cards that would, I think would see a lot more play, again, because of that lessening of the restriction. Uh, first up, there's Wrath the Redeemed, a 1-1 one, one Elf Warrior that costs a Selesnia. It has Tuna Selesnia and Tap It, put a 1-1 one, one Green and White Elf Warrior creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, for Selesnia, Selesnia, and Tap It, for each creature token you control, put a token into play that's copy that creature. Yeah, this could go great in kind of any kind of a token deck or just essentially kind of, you know, Elf Tribal. Uh, so yeah, not having that restriction of being Selesnia or just being able to use it in, in green or white decks, uh, it could definitely see a lot more play. Uh, next up, there's Vexing Shusher, a 2-2 Goblin Shaman that can't be countered, and it costs Gruul Gruul, and it has Gruul, uh, target spell you can, uh, target spell can't be countered by spells or abilities. So yeah, this is a good kind of anti-control measure uh, card. I think it would see a lot more play, again, if it didn't have that restriction for just being in Gruul, essentially. Um, Murderous Redcap uh, is one of the kind of combo persist creatures that I think would see a lot more play if it wasn't as restricted for its colors. Uh, a 2-2 Goblin Assassin that costs uh, 2 Rakdos Rakdos. When it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to uh, its power to any target it's got persist. So yeah, this is a combo piece, essentially. There's a, a, a lot of different ways to kind of make sure that you can keep looping this over and over again to ping everything and everyone down. Um, yeah, so that's definitely one. Uh, Kitchen Finks is kind of the other side of that. A 3-2, oof. That costs one Slesnia Slesnia. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and Scott Persist. So again, this is just kind of the, uh, that opposite side of the Murderous Red Cap. This is gaining infinite life. There are ways to use and abuse that. Again, that, you know, right now it's kind of more restricted because you have to have both, you know, green and white in your deck. But if you kind of took out that hybrid restriction, it would be see a lot more play, I believe. Uh, next up, there's Merc Fiend Liege. Uh, it's a 4-4 four, four horror, horror that costs two Simic Simic Simic. It says other green creatures you control get plus one plus one. Other blue creatures you control get plus one plus one. But the most important part is untap all green and or blue creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So yeah, this one is kind of like that Seedborn Muse-ish effect. Obviously, it's not nearly as powerful. It's just for creatures, not for all your permanents. Uh, but yeah, so it's basically a, a kind of additional Seedborn Muse for certain decks. Again, taking out the restriction of having to be in Simic and, you know, being able to be either in, in green or in blue could definitely make it allow it to see more play. 
Next up, let's move on to a somewhat recent card. Uh, one that, you know, actually, let me just talk about as in one in the 99 as a companion, because actually it can't be used as a companion. So that's Yorion Sky Nomad, a 4-5 Bird Serpent that costs 3 uh, Azorius Azorius. It has flying. When it enters the battlefield, exile on any number of other non- any number of other non-land permanents you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of, your, of the next end step. So yeah, this one is just basically a mass blink spell. I could see this having a lot of application, you know, in, in decks that have either blue or white, but not ones that have both. So yeah, just a mass blink spell like this could definitely see more play. Uh, Fiend Artisan is a 1-1 one, one Nightmare that costs uh, Golgari Golgari. It gets plus one sun for each creature card in your graveyard, and it has pay X and a Golgari and tap it to sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. Activate ability only anytime you cast a sorcery. So yeah, this one definitely I think could see more play. It's kind of like a, a repeatable kind of tutor. It's like a birthing pod kind of tutor. So yeah, if I mean, obviously it, it's a great card. sees play in a good amount of Golgari decks or decks that have both green and black. But if you kind of took out the restriction that it only had to be either black or green, it would see a lot more play. It's a pretty expensive card, though. Uh, next up, we've got another card in Golgari with Worm Harvest. It's a source that costs two Golgari, 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 so five mana in total. It says, create a 1-1 one, one black and green worm creature token for each land card in your graveyard, and it's got Retrace. Um, kind of any self kind of mill deck that has either black or green that's going to be milling themselves a ton could u utilize this card very well. Again, that restriction kind of makes it so it's seen play in less decks, but without their restriction, it's seen more. Uh, a board white protection spell that I think is pretty fantastic in decks that you can use it with Cauldron Haze would see more play. It's an instant that costs one in Orzov. It says choose any number of target creatures. Each of those creatures gains persistence until on a turn. This is actually a pretty unique card. Um, again, persist, you know, is board white protection. It does kind of lessen the creatures when they come back into play because they come back into play, they minus one, minus one counter on them. But you can abuse, you know, ETBs, you know, uh, leave the battlefield triggers. You can always, also use this in a political way, you know, to target your opponent's creatures. You know, if you say, hey, Let's make a deal. If you don't attack me with that creature ever and you just attack this other player, I'll give your creature persistence until end of turn so it can come back with that board wipe coming. So yeah, uh, being in either, you know, white or black, I think it would see more play. And the last one that I'm going to bring up in this category is kind of also a color pie break, in in my opinion, at least slightly. And that's Biomantic Mastery. It's a source that costs five Simic, 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 so seven mana in total. It says draw a card for each creature target player controls, then draw a card for each creature and then another target player controls. So this one breaks the color pie in that if you're choosing players other than yourself, which you, I believe one of them at least you have to choose, green has ways to draw cards based on the number of creatures that you control, but it really doesn't, green decks don't really have ways to draw, creature, draw creatures, draw cards based on the number of cards opponents control. So this can draw you a ton of cards for seven mana. Again, uh, I do think it's a, a color pie break in that way. And yeah, I think green decks could, could see some use for this card. I think it would see more play. Seven mana is a good amount, but green decks have plenty of ways to ramp and actually cast this. Um... Now, a question that I would have kind of if the hybrid man rules were changed, basically one one kind of thing to consider is like, how does this affect companions? So companions are are legal and commander. You can use, you know, companions. Basically, your deck has to have that restriction. So Gyruda Doom of Depths is uh, cost four and Demir Demir. So you have it has to kind of fit within your compa your commander's color requirements. So now if that hybrid man rule change does your companion kind of count with that as well? So like, could you use guy ruda uh, as your companion for a mono black deck because essentially that hybrid mana rule again has changed so does that really work does that change as well i guess is the question yes the rest of your deck would have to still meet that companion requirement with guy ruda it's like your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs so if you've got a mono black deck with all cards that have even man even converted mana costs is guy ruda still kind of okay to do that or not so that's kind of a question that i would have or that i guess that the community would have as well Another question to consider with a potential hybrid mana rules change is kind of how does this affect kind of cards that have hybrid mana in text boxes? So not just, you know, their casting costs, but also kind of in the text box, which is where they're considered to be part of, a, you know, a color identity as well. So like a Shaman of the Great Hunt, it's an Orc Shaman that costs three and a red, uh, but it does have Ferocious, pay two Simic Simic, draw a card for each creature you control, power four greater. So now can you play this in a gruel deck? Can you play this... And an is it deck is, you know, is that distinction changing basically where, you know, it's not just, you know, the, the mana cost or mana symbol that's in the, uh, in their casting cost, but it's also in the text box as well. Does that change as well? I would assume that it would, uh, and Shaman of the Great Hunt would actually be a good example of one. I think it would see a lot more play because yeah, there's, there's a lot of gruel decks out there that would love a repeatable source of card draw, uh, based on number of creatures in play essentially. Uh, and then the final question that basically I would have, or the community might have kind of with this hybrid mana rules change is how does this work with 
with cards like Reaper King. Reaper King uh, costs two aura white, two aura blue, two aura black, two aura red, and two aura green. So essentially, you know, if you could, you know, pick and choose kind of what the color identity is based off of, you know, hybrid mana, you, it's basically kind of like the argument is, you know, you can pick one or the other. You can pick one or the other for each of these. So essentially, this is a colorless card at the end of the day, then, you know, basically, if the hybrid mana rules were to change, you know, not that Reaper King would be extremely valuable in a lot of decks. Um, but, you know, essentially, you know, this is a instead of just costing, you know, Wooberg or whatnot, this just costs 10 mana, 10 uh, generic mana in total. So you could use it in any deck then. So and yeah, that, that's again, that's kind of the rule again or the rule. That's kind of the thought against changing the rules. It just kind of really makes things confusing like this. Uh, one card that might see play that kind of does this in a similar way is Beseech the Queen. Um, cost two or black, two or black, two or black. So yeah, it's a it's basically a tutor. It says, search your library for a card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control, reveal it, and then put it into your hand and shuffle your library. So yeah, this essentially, you know, says, okay, yeah, you, uh, you can just have any deck and have a tutor now. And now the argument against this might be, you know, oh, well, that's not really that powerful because it still costs six mana or whatnot for a tutor. But obviously, there are ways, you know, that if you can tap a land for any color, if you could tap a mana rock for any color, that you could still cast this for, you know, black, 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 and, you know, a, a mono green deck even or whatnot. You know, you could still have a tutor, essentially, uh, in any deck that just costs three mana. You know, I could see a card like this seeing a lot more play. Again, I'm, I'm no kind of rules expert on kind of how all this would work. If it were to change, I've got no insight on this thing changing. I think it's an interesting thought experiment, though, to talk about, you know, what if the hybrid mana rule change? What kind of impacts would it have? You know, how would it actually look? You know, and again, I'm excited to see kind of what potential announcement the rules committee has or, or updates that they might have coming up on the 29th. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. You know, what do you think about a potential hybrid mana rules change? What side do you kind of uh, agree more so with? Should the rules change? Should they not change? Are there any kind of stipulations in there on, you know, kind of, you know, rules or hybrid, uh, hybrid text and text boxes or, you know, that kind of colorless slash color, you know, uh, hybrid mana rule. So yeah. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who help make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commandersquarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.